Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that lack of gratitude leads to blocking your blessings. The truth is sometimes when we get used to having a good thing, we take it for granted. Whether it be a relationship we've been in long term, having a job that we once loved but are now bored of, or getting used to having a great salary. The list continues. Have you ever noticed that the moment you stop being grateful for something, that the blessings eventually stop flowing in? The moment we start taking the things we once valued for granted, the moment we block our blessings in that area because our lack of enthusiasm and gratitude gives a signal to the universe that we don't really care much to have it. Guess what happens? The opportunities over time stop flowing in and we eventually lose those things we once were excited to have. The fastest way to be successful in any area of your life is to simply be genuinely grateful for that opportunity. Though it's easy to be complacent at times, when we remind ourselves of how blessed we truly are, whether it's having a great family or having a steady income, the more we're able to tap into the magical flow of gratitude and get more opportunities flowing our way that makes us feel good. As Melody Beattie quotes, gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos to order, confusion to clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, and a stranger into a friend. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, I know that uh, the reality star uh, Ben Higgins um, from The Bachelorette, I know that he also reached out to you and told you that mm -hmm. your book impacted him. And so talk to us about some of the feedback you've had so far. Yeah, like, I've had so many feedback from people like him and other celebrities too that said that, that, that their book, that this book um, really helped them and they were inspired by my words and what I've gone through and many people have related to my depression and um, a lot of kids have said that my book has you know changed their life and uh, many people have reached out to me saying that they wanted to end their life but after reading the book or hearing my talk um, they were inspired and they were given hope that they weren't going to do it. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have Canadian motivational speaker, mental health advocate and author of I'm Not Your Average Teen, Brittany Christantos. Her book was ranked number one bestseller on Amazon for teen health. Brittany, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? Thank you so much. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad we can make this happen. I know we've been talking about it for a while, so yeah, it's, it's good to have you. So Brittany, I wanna talk about your book, I'm Not Your Average Teen. I know that you're using your platform to inspire, but you know, in your book, you talk about depression, uh, hitting rock bottom. So talk to us about those experiences. Yeah, so when I was 15 years old, I struggled with mental health, um, depression and anxiety. And honestly, I was just um, on a journey of trying to find myself. And when I hit rock bottom, um, that's when I really discovered that you know, I need to find a reason to be happy and I need to figure out how I can get through these hard times. And so through that rough period in my life, at 15 years old, I went to, I remember I went to a library, I went to a bookstore and I bought all these self-help books of how to heal my life and get through these hard times and I learned tips and discoveries of how I can, you know, find happiness and feel good during this rough path. And through that process, I learned um, tips that I help other teenagers now um, to get through their depression and get through their anxiety. Mm -hmm. And so I took my pain and took my struggle and I really transformed that into figuring out like how can I really be happy because, you know, life could be really hard and we can go through rough paths every single day, but if we can, you know, find reasons to be happy and figure who we really are, then life can be much easier. Yeah, I completely agree. And, you know, I know this might be hard to talk about, but I know in your book, you know, you talk about a period where you wanted to end your life. So, you know, how did you turn that around and go from despair to empowerment? Yeah, I mean, um, when I wanted to end my life, where I had these suicidal thoughts, um, it was really hard because I think of that really dark moment, like that mo moment in that time, something hit me where it was like, 
I need to live, you know, like I need to find a reason to be happy. I need to um, find my purpose, find my soul, find my, my the things that's going to make me feel good in this lifetime. And not too many people have had that. Like my fear is when people are struggling with depression, are they going to have that instant thought like I need to change my life around? Are they going to have that instant thought where they're going to be like, how can I get through this? But for me, luckily, I had that that feeling where it was like, I need to be happy. And so after that, I really got happy. Like I discovered ways to feel good. I reached out to a life coach. I went to therapy. I read books. I really did my research and my um, time to like discover those tools. But for anyone out there that are struggling with that feeling or have that moment where they don't want to live, they, they, they need to understand that, you know, things will get better and they can instantly change that thought like, okay, I don't want to live, but right now I want to live. I, I got to make my life the best I can. Um, and I talk about affirmations a lot. So like positive thoughts. And so I hate my life. You can say, I love my life or today's going to be a good day. Mm -hmm. You know, just changing that thought in your head really um, changes everything. Mm -hmm. It makes you want to feel better today. Even though things are hard, even though things are challenging, mm -hmm. just by changing your thought process and reaching out for help and knowing you're not alone is very um, helpful in, when you're going through that. Yeah, definitely. I definitely think that words have power. And I was just discussing this with my guest uh, last week. Uh, her name was Dr. Kim Brown about how you know, affirmations are so important. I start my day with affirmations. Um, I put powerful words after I am, uh, like, you know, I am happy, I am powerful, I am great. Uh, today's gonna be a great day. Like I write stuff like that and it helps me so much and it makes me feel empowered. And the days that I don't do those affirmations, I definitely can see a shift in my mood. So I, I, I think that's really great advice. You know, I wanted to do this, segment because I feel like mental health is one of those things we don't really talk about and especially during the pandemic a lot of people have been home not feeling good uh, I mean depression rates are up so you know what advice do you have for you know people suffering from depression or anxiety um, and how could they tap into their higher power during these difficult times yeah, for sure. Like I even talk about um, recently that, you know, during the pandemic, my mental health has been really hard. I talk about how it's really, it, it's given me a lot of anxiety, like being stuck at home, being home all the time, not able to go out, not able to see your family, not able to see your friends. It's, it's hard for anyone. But on top of that, put someone who's dealt, dealt with the years of, of depression and anxiety and mental health problems, it's going to be way more tough. And so I talk about really spending time with your family spending time with people in your house, spending time um, reaching out to people during these hard times. And also through the pandemic, I created a, a game called Stuck in the House. And this game was because I was feeling really alone and I was going through depression through this pandemic. And I wanted to do something that would cheer my spirits and make me feel happy. And, and so I created a game that um, is really fun to play with your family and your, and your friends or even on Skype or Zoom call at the time. And it allows you to spend time and get to know the people that, that are around you. And that's the most important part, whether you're playing a game or reading a book or talking, just connect, communicate with people around you, whether it's on the phone or people in your house. And through this pandemic, I really got to know my family in a way that I never knew before. So I really channeled and transformed that struggle, like I'm alone, this is sad, I'm bored. And I really utilized it to get to know the people around me and get to have fun as well. Mm -hmm. And so if you are struggling with mental health and you are going through things because of the pandemic, just know that anyone is around you. You can pick up a call, you can, you can call someone, you can text someone and reaching out is so important through these hard times. Yeah, I think that's very true. And also I wanted to talk about, you know, people that are going through mental health problems or depression, sometimes they're scared to tell their families because their families don't really understand it. And sometimes even society doesn't understand. So how would you encourage our viewers for someone going through depression to talk about it, tell their families, even if they don't understand what's happening, how, how do you think they should break the news to their, their loved ones? For sure, I think the most important thing is just staying true to yourself. I think that if you can speak from your heart and tell people exactly how you feel, then there's nothing going wrong. Um, 
mental health is more about your feelings, right? Like if you're feeling down today or you're going through something, just just tell, tell them that. Tell the person, tell your parents, tell your sister, tell your brother that, you know, today's not a good day. I'm going through this. And, and, and they can give you words of encouragement. And um, when you're struggling, it's really important to just express. Self ex- self-expression is the most important part in this. I used to journal um, my thoughts, my feelings, because I wasn't able to really say it out loud. And so that's how I became um, writing my book, is through my journals. And so if you can't talk to a, a person, if you don't know how to get those words out, write it down on a piece of paper, on your phone, in your notes, anywhere. Just write how you feel. If it's bad, if it's dark thoughts, don't be afraid of the thoughts. Just, just let it out. Mm-hmm. Express it in every way you can, whether it's writing, talking, or art, or music, or expression. Anything that allows you to, to express your feelings is so important. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And I think that, you know, a lot of people tie depression and anxiety to lack. Like there are people you see out there that have everything, you know, they have the nice car, they have the nice home, they have the great job, they have that perfect relationship, yet they are still unhappy. So what are your thoughts on that uh, for our viewers to better understand that sometimes, you know, it's it's you can have everything and still be depressed. There's a lot of celebrities out there that have everything, the money, the, the cars, the women, this and that, but they're still not happy. And um, I think most people, when they're, especially when you're in a younger generation, like some people I've met, they're so motivated to have the money, have the cars, have the girls, like especially for guys and females, too, they, they're motivated to have that nice car and have that nice purse and stuff like that. And they think that that's going to give them um, happiness. But when you find that and you reach that, you realize you're not happy because you have months and years and years of trauma and triggers and childhood childhood issues growing up that you haven't dealt with. And so if you are motivated by the materialistic things in the world, you're never going to find happiness. You're going to find happiness when you find it within yourself and then you can achieve all the success and accomplishments in the world you want. But if you aren't happy within before you get successful and before you achieve the things you want to achieve in life, you're not going to feel that joy and that, that, that feeling that um, happiness can do for you. And so I guess the lesson, like you said here, is stop looking outside of you and stop looking at the world and stop you know, trying to achieve things that don't bring you happiness and really focus on what's going on inside of you. How can you feel happy today? And maybe that's where people need to start with. How can you be happy today? How can you feel good today? I think that's the questions that we need to be asking ourselves more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. 100%. It definitely all starts within if you're not happy mentally and nothing will make you happy. And that's why I created this platform to give tips and advice and you know showcase stories like yours as well to uplift people. I think that's so important, especially with everything that is happening in the world right now. In your book, you talk about um, connecting to your spirit and how you know that's when the shift happened to make you happier and get out of your depression. So talk to us how you connected to your spirit and how it helped you. Um, yeah, for sure. So. Um Connecting through spirit really for me was just connecting to myself, connecting to the higher self within me that I want to be. So when I was a little girl, I always like idolized who, I, who, who you know, my older self would be kind of thing. And for me, like in every stage of my life, I'm always idolizing like how can I be better? How can I be a better version of myself? And so when I talk about connecting to your spirit, I'm talking about connecting to that part of yourself that has no fear, that has no judgment, that is confident, that is happy, that um, chases anything that go, that that comes their way. If you have a goal, you go after that. And so that idol, like that 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 higher self of my of me, was that person that was strong and powerful and confident, and just went after things. And so there's a lot of things that I did to help myself get through that. Is like calm and peaceful exercises like yoga and meditation um, and things that allowed me to be really peaceful and stop thinking about my stress but we all have like a higher self within ourselves kind of thing a person we want to become or a goal we want to achieve and so when you connect to that higher self that that spirit within you um, you just feel like much better 
And how do, how do you connect to your higher self for people that are, you know, really sad and they just don't have the motivation to? What are some tips that you have for them to, you know, feel better and connect to the, that higher power within? For me, it's always writing. So I, I'd write notes to myself, like, today's going to be a good day. Or I'd write, dear Brittany, like, just because today is a really bad day doesn't mean it won't be a bad day. Or I'll write, like, notes of, like, my my, my future self of who I will become, what I, what I will feel, what I will go through, what I will do, like, things I'll achieve. And it's like, I don't know if people hear of, like, manifestation. It's like you have a goal and, like, you keep thinking about it and you keep bringing it to reality because you are like you believe in it so much and it's energy and energy like creates your reality sometimes too so it's like if you have a higher self um that's kind of like the future of you so you keep thinking it you keep feeling it you keep seeing yourself being that person you want to become and it will become naturally because you believe in it so much because you put so much energy and love and joy into it and so that's kind of where it was at for me it was like i saw like a better version of myself one that wasn't so sad that one that wasn't um you know, um, not wanting to wake up in the morning. Like that was, that's what I was going through. I would wake up and I'd be like, I want to sleep more. I would sleep all the time. I would never go out. Um, and so that's where like the depression hit me. And I was like connecting to my higher self because I want to become a better version of myself. Someone who goes out that feels the joy of life and feels happiness. And so for anyone out there, um, that is listening to this, all you have to do is just like, Think about who you want to become in the future and who you who you want to become right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I 100% believe in manifestation. I have a vision board right in front of my bed that I look at every single morning. I have all the things that I want to accomplish. So even envisioning your best self and who you want to be, I think that's great advice because you can definitely manifest it if you if you really really want it. Um, I want to talk about your book. It's the number one best-selling book for teen health on Amazon. So congratulations on that. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> I know you wrote this book when you were 15, right? A few years ago, a lot of years ago now. <laughs> so so what insights do you share in your book? When it says I share my book. So for my for that book, it was um, tips that I was going through as a teenager. So it may be different now when you're when you're a young adult or whatever, but it still follows anything because in the in the tips it was more like surround yourself with positive people. So in high school, when you were you know going through that drama stage and like you have the popular girls and you have the, like the other crew and the other crew in, in high school, it was more like surround yourself with people that make you feel good instead of always achieving that popularity. Um, in life now and as a young adult too, it's like surround yourself with people who are going to make you feel good. You know, like don't, don't, don't allow drama or conflict around you, whether it's family or friends or, or people you're close with for so long, if they don't make you feel good and they always bring you down, just try to distance yourself from those people, right? And then there's another tip in there that was um, chase your fears. And so, you know, anything that makes you scared, that gives you that butterfly in your feeling, just chase it. Whether it's like you're scared of heights or you're scared of spiders, try to figure a way to like go near it so you can kind of achieve it and, and accomplish it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was some tips. And the same thing in life too. When you, when, when, when you are scared and you're fearful, chase those fears. What is it that makes you afraid and, and go after it? Whether it's trying a new job or trying a new career if that scares you, then that's great because that's going to make you better. That's going to achieve your life in a better way. You're going to achieve something really great if you go after those fears. Yeah, definitely. I, Who you surround yourself is so important. Um, I, I learned that pretty early on and you know I've kind of made my circle smaller I used to have so many acquaintances so many friends and you know what if someone doesn't make you feel good and uplift you and encourage you I definitely think that's great advice that and also what you mentioned about um, chasing your fear not chasing your fears but doing things that you're afraid of it makes you a better person and it teaches you a lot about yourself so I think those are all great tips where do you see yourself Brittany in five years where do you see yourself taking your platform well, for me, it's um, I've always wanted my platform to help young youth and kids. And over the years, I've been, you know, doing talks and motivational talks and really working interactively with these kids. And that's really important to me is because I've met a lot of kids who have said that my workshops or my talks have really changed their life. So in five years, I want to, you know, keep writing books, keep continuing my platform and, and helping more kids in different countries and 
who don't have the access to mental health care that we do. And I want to be able to help those kids in any way possible and write more books and do more talks and make people feel good. So continuing what I do, but do it more kind of thing in five years. <laughs> Absolutely. And speaking of touching lives, I know that the reality star uh, Ben Higgins um, from The Bachelorette, I know that he also reached out to you and told you that mm -hmm. your book impacted him. And so talk to us about some of the feedback you've had so far. Yeah, like I've had so many feedback from people like him and other celebrities too that said that, that their book, that this book um, really helped them and they were inspired by my words and what I've gone through and many people have related to my depression and um, a lot of kids have said that my book has you know changed their life and uh, many people have reached out to me saying that they wanted to end their life but after reading the book or hearing my talk um, they were inspired and they were given hope that they weren't going to do it and they reached out to proper help and they seeked guidance and proper care health care for their mental health and they they have gotten through it but my main thing is is i want to not that i want to change people's lives but i want to give people an answer to want to live again if they're feeling alone or they're feeling sad i want to give people hope that they, they can live they can feel good and you know i'm not a therapist i can't speak on that but i can say that i've gotten through these struggles and i know how it feels like and I know what it feels like to be alone and feel this way. And through my experience, I want to be able to help these kids who are going through hard times. And so it's been really amazing um, responses from so many people. And I'm so grateful. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And Brittany, you're so authentic and real. And I think that's been part of the success of the book is because, you know, you're not scared to be vulnerable and talk about these struggles. Th these are not topics that everyone wants to talk about and, you know, put themselves out there. So I really uh, commend you on that. And I think you're doing a wonderful job. And that's why it's inspiring so many people because they can definitely resonate with it. Um, where can people connect with you on social media and purchase the book as well? I'm not your average teen. On any social media platform, it's just Britt Christantos. Um, they can reach out to me on my Instagram, Facebook, website, or even on Amazon. Um, I sell my book on there, both of my books. And so they can, you know, just reach out to me there. It's called I'm Not Your Average Teen. The book is called if they want to get a book on Amazon. Um, and yeah, I'm here to help people. I'm here to message. If you, anyone has any questions or they're feeling alone, just know that I'm here and I'm, I'm here to talk in any day and be someone's friend if they need that. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Brittany, for being on the show today. We're going to put all your social media handles as well so our viewers can connect with you. Thank you for being on the show today and uh, keep up the amazing work. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.